Okay, so this is the uh, recording for Algebra 1A, Credit 1, Lesson uh, 1.1. And uh, Lesson 1.1 does start on page 15, uh, but I don't believe there's anything we have to fill in there. So we're going to skip over to page 16. Problem 1 is done for you. You might want to review, take a moment to review that, but we're going to start on problem number 2. And so on problem number 2, we're going to kind of... Uh, Pick up where we left off on the intro video. Uh, but we're going to take this a step further. We're going to solve these equations, but we're also going to justify the property of equality. And we'll explain what that means in a second, but it's very easy uh, that we're using uh, for each step. All right, so again, we're going to start off by drawing our line through the middle. We observe that X is on the left-hand side, so that's where our focus is. The first thing we have to do, remember, remember we're going to do our addition and subtraction first. So while we are eventually going to divide by negative 5, we need to get rid of this plus 10 first of all. So we're going to start by subtracting 10 to both sides. And we end up with negative 5x. Of course, these cancel equals 40. And um, what we're going to do now is down below where it says justify each step. So the first thing that we did was subtraction. So that would be the subtraction property of equality, but the words property of equality are already written for you, so all you have to fill in the blank is subtraction. So it's the subtraction property of equality. And that's what you're going to put in the first blank below. Now, here, um, x is being multiplied by negative 5, so we're going to divide by negative 5 to both sides. Of course, the negative 5s will cancel. And then over here, 40 divided by negative 5. 40 divided by 5 is 8. A positive divided by a negative is a negative. So there's our answer, x equals 8. And then for the justification of the second step, well, we did divide by negative 5. So that would be the division property of equality. And again, I believe the boxes for these are down below the problem. And again, the words property of equality are already written for you. So all you need to do is write in the word subtraction, in this case, for the first step and division for the second step. And depending on when you're watching this, don't forget if you are uh, have been trained and have access to Cami that you should be showing your work as well as opposed to just putting in the answers. Okay, so now let's go to number three on the same page there, and which is page uh, 16. Okay, so number three, we have one, one third x minus nine equals three. Again, we're going to draw our line there. And again, the purpose of that line is just to separate the left side and the right side of the equal sign. All right, so for our first step, we notice that we have a minus or negative nine there. So we're going to add nine to both sides. And of course, the nines cancel, and we have one third x, and then three plus nine would be 12. So the justification for our first step uh, is going to be addition, because we added to nine to both sides. And again, since the words property of equality are already written for you, all you have to write is the word addition. But it is the addition property of equality. Okay, so now for step two, um, remember we said that, of course, a number being multiplied by a variable, the opposite of multiply is to divide. But, <coughs> excuse me, but we said that when there's a fraction, the easier way to do that is to multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 1 over 3, remember the reciprocal is just flipping the fraction, that would be 3 over 1. So we're going to multiply 3 over 1, which is just 3, same 3 divided by 1 is 3, so we can... Just write 3 over here since there's no fraction. Well, of course, whenever you multiply a number by its reciprocal, it's 1, so we have 1x, or you can just say everything cancels out. And then over here, 12 times 3 is 36, so our answer is 36. And uh, what do we do here? Well, we multiply, so we're going to write the word multiplication. In. So this would be the multiplication property of equality. And so purpose of this is not to create more work, of course, 
is to get used to justifying the steps, which is when you get to geometry, that's a big thing when we're doing proofs and everything. And also, so we understand why we're doing what we're doing. All right, so that is number three. Let's go over to page 17 now. And page 17, uh, number four, we're going to be looking at. Let's go ahead and do that. We've got 25 minus 3m equals 40. Okay, so on this one, uh, again, we want to get rid of the 25. And careful, because this is a common mistake. Um, people will assume that this is a negative 25 because it's uh, the minus sign. But remember, the sign of a term is always to the left. And since there's nothing there, we assume it's positive. And so we're going to subtract 25 to both sides, which is obviously the um, opposite addition, or positive would be negative or subtraction. So those cancel out. We bring down, don't forget the negative, negative 3m, and then 40 divided, or 40 minus 25, I should say, is 15. So justifying our first step, we did subtraction, so that would be the subtraction property of a quality. And again, the words property of equality are already written, so you only have to write the word subtraction. All right now, for step two, m is being multiplied by negative three, and there's no fraction here, so we'll just go with you know, what our rules are. The opposite of multiplying is to divide. So we're going to divide negative three to both sides. And 15 divided by negative three, 15 divided by three is five. A positive divided by a negative is a negative. So our answer is negative five. And then again, the justification for the second step, we divided there by negative 3. So it's going to be the division property of equality. And so we write in the word division. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to number 6. Now number 6 there, we have a word problem. Uh, and so we're going to read that and then see what they ask us to do there. All right, so number 6 at the bottom of 17 says... Jessica wants to buy four new tires for her truck. She has a budget of $500, and she knows there is a flat installation fee of $60. To figure out how much one tire would cost, Jessica used the equation shown where T is the cost for each tire. And so here's the equation, 500 equals 60 plus 4T. Now, if you look below there, there's some answer choices and it says select two of the following steps and reasons that can be used to solve this equation well we have to, let's take a look at this more closely if you notice the first two choices relate to step one so only one of those can be true so we're going to choose one of the first two choices and then notice on the second two choices those relate to step two and we'll choose one of those as well um, so let's take a look here. So what we're going to do is just start solving it and see which answer choice would match up with what we did. All right. So we draw our line through here. And now I think, I think it's for the first time. We actually have the variable on the right-hand side. And before we start, let's just kind of take a look. They've, they've written the equation for us. But let's understand what everything means. So $500 is the total cost uh, for the entire purchase. And, uh, or she, excuse me, she has a budget of $500, I should say. And we're all told that this is the installation fee. So if we're going to spend $500, so that's her budget, but it looks like that's what we're spending, um, what's the cost for each tire? Well, the four is there because there's four tires in the car. So the total cost for just the tires is four times the number, or excuse me, four times the amount that each tire costs. All right, so... That's explaining what the equation represents, but again, they've given it to us, so we can focus just on solving. So again, the variables on the right, so now we're focused on the right. And again, we want to get rid of the 60, first of all, because remember, we do our division last. And so this would be a positive 60 because there's nothing to the left of the 60, so we're going to subtract 60 to both sides. And we get 500 minus 60 is 440, those cancel out. We bring down the 4T. So now let's see what the step one says. So the uh, step one, it says step one is to subtract 60 from both sides of the equation 
to determine how much money is left for the four tires. Well, that's what we did. That is the correct answer. The first choice there, um, the, the very first one, because that's what we did. We subtracted 60 to both sides. That was the installation fee. And now what's left is what is left in our budget or what's left for us to spend for the four tires. So that is correct. Now, the other one there for step one, it says is to divide both sides by four. And of course, we did not do that. So that would not be correct. Well, speaking of dividing by four, that's exactly what we're going to do now because T is being multiplied by four. So we're going to do the opposite of multiplying by four, which is dividing by four. And again, remember, T is on the, the variables on the right. So that's what we're focused on. So the fours cancel out, leaving us with just T, 440 divided by 4 is 110. So T is 110. And remember, T represents the price of each tire. So that's why we put the little dollar sign there. The price of each tire is $110. But they want us to, of course, we needed to solve it, but they want us to choose the correct step. And then looking at the last two choices, remember we said the first one was correct, second one was not. So we that was the how we did uh, step one. And then the two choices for step two are the last two answers. The first one says step two is to divide uh, both sides of the equation by four to determine the cost of each tire. Well, that's what we did. We divided by four to both sides to determine the cost of the tire. Now they don't ask us what it is, but we do know that it's 110. So the first step two answer, which is the third box down, um, overall is the correct answer. Uh, the last answer choice, it says step two is to add 60 to both sides. Well, obviously we didn't do that, so that's why that is not correct. So you, um, that is how you do number six. Okay, so that is actually, that brings us to the homework now. So um, uh, again, this is to go over the lessons to teach you what to do. And then um, on your own, you'll be doing the homework. The homework for this lesson and by the way, I should say homework and lesson checkpoint. So the homework and lesson checkpoints are on pages uh, 18 through 20. So what you would be doing now is completing the home, all the homework problems and lesson checkpoint that are on pages 18 through 20. And if needed, um, definitely rewatch the video if needed. And um, also, you know, ask for help if needed. But definitely start with rewatching the video because that should help you out. All right. Well, good luck with that.